for today's thoughts, I was thinking of, and the clock is not running. There it is. <laughs> it's like, ooh, we were stuck. <laughs> but I was thinking today about the things that we still have to get done <laughs> for the disability community. And I'm sure if you stopped and thought about all the things that could make it better, transportation being one, housing would be the other. Those are two high tickets. Um, you know, sidewalks that need to be in good condition, uh, safety when we're crossing the streets, uh, more, more accessibility in, in restaurants and agencies, stores, wherever the public can go. And uh, the big one that I've put out there is, you know, the rejection of service dogs out in public, um, which is becoming a big problem. And, you know, I've said to lawyers that a law has no teeth if, if the community doesn't enforce it. And by community, I mean everyone, and especially the lawyers. Uh, if nobody talks about the law, everybody ignores it. It's just a law in the books, and nobody knows about it. <laughs> then, <laughs> then it just sinks in, in the sinkhole somewhere. Uh, so it's really important for the ADA to be known, to be spoken about, um, and all of us, all of us, you know, disabled and non-disabled, we, we have a role to play in, in all of this. Uh, you know, for, for housing, to remind landlords or to encourage landlords if they were, uh, they were fundings, and I'm sure there might be some fundings out there for landlords to really, um, to really consider building a house uh, or houses for people with disabilities. And it can be a variety of people for, you know, for the blind, uh, for the deaf, um, for, you know, for people with dexterity issues, uh, for those with mobility issues, you know, for, for housing projects to be really focused on that because we are so short and so scarce in housing for the disabled that you won't lose, you won't lose, you know, those, those, and you know, if you have, if you are a person who built housing for the disabled, especially for those with mobility issues and dexterity issues, publicize it, you know, stand from the rooftops, let us know, uh, because we're, we're really having trouble out here finding housing. And it's, it's, it won't be known if, if we don't speak about it, if we don't talk about it, if we don't encourage companies to, uh, you know, and it could be in a, in a different way. Maybe there's a lot of housing uh, and there could be companies out there encouraging uh, the elderly to, uh, to adjust and adapt their housing for mobility needs and they could specialize in that area, and there could be grants and things that it could cover uh, those expenses and would help the ones who are living there now, and perhaps when they move out, then, then it would be set and ready for people with disabilities, with mobility disabilities. So I think there's a couple of different ways that we can go about this. But certainly we all have a role to play and we need to talk about it more and express, you know, the need more so it's heard. You know, we're so quiet and so w either we're angry or humble or <laughs> whatever or we're busy, but we need to talk about it. And any chance we get to an organization, to um, politicians, if you have a uh, 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 technique to do that and you're skilled for streets, sidewalks, 
that are dangerous for us, you know, to talk to the city, call them, write them a letter, you know. I live on such and such an area, and these streets and sidewalks are dangerous for me. I use a, I use a scooter, I use a wheelchair, um, and I would really appreciate it for, for myself and other fellow uh, uh, people in the community who use scooters and wheelchairs to please fix this sidewalk or to please you know, design streets in the city or especially in my area that are safer for people with wheelchairs, please. You know, so uh, the buses, if you take the bus and there's, you know, things that are wrong, things that shouldn't be, you know, speak out. Get a hold of somebody in the bus company. I email them all the time when there's, there's been an ac there's been a incident or something that went wrong or, you know, I was getting on the bus and they could only buckle me from behind. And I said, excuse me, it has to be the front, too, because my casters on the front, they're loose. They're not locked. So they couldn't get the straps out. They were the straps on, on both sides of the bus. They were stuck. They couldn't, they couldn't, they weren't rolling. They were just absolutely stuck. So I wrote to the bus company, and I explained, I, you know, I use the bus uh, off and on, and they are not locking me down on the front of my power wheelchair. My casters are not locked. Those are loose wheels. And if the bus goes, turns, you know, my wheelchair is going to swing. So I absolutely need to be uh, locked down in the front and in the back. And the drivers, it wasn't the driver's fault. Those straps are stuck. So please have your, your technicians take a look and check the buses as they're coming in to the shop to make sure that those straps are loose and ready to be used so it could put us you know in danger so um so the bus company wrote me back and said no we appreciate it um i think that you know i once i just let a driver the let the driver do whatever she was going to do and i watched her uh, lock me down just in the back and it's like no <laughs> so i wrote the bus company i said driver such and such and such and such of us did not lock me down in the front. And the drivers, all of them, need to understand that power wheelchairs, their front casters are not locked. And if they turn or make a sudden move from side to side, our wheelchairs are going to roll. So, you know, to keep us safe and to keep me safe, uh, keep other passengers <laughs> safe, <laughs> you got to lock us down, front and back. So um, they you know, may emailed me back again and, and told me, you know, they would talk to all of the drivers. And thank you so much for the input. So there is a variety of ways that um, we can make an impact. And I think I feel like, you know, the disability community, we are large. And we care about each other. And I think that um, we all can we all can play a role, even if it's a small one, even if it's just emailing the the bus company and saying, "Hey, this is going wrong. Um, this is dangerous for me and for other passengers." Uh, you know, even if it's just that uh, is is important. So uh, my question to you is, what kind of things can you do for the disability community? for the community in general that will improve your life. You know, it doesn't need necessarily to be my life, but what about you? What part of, you know, your life would you consider important to improve? Um, you know, talking to landlords, uh, making a, creating letters, giving them out to landlords, um, talking to your city about streets, sidewalks for wheelchair users, um, grocery stores. You know, sometimes they have the counters are really high, and we can't, we can't see the, the cashier, the register. You know, I have hearing problems, so as many times in a loud and noisy grocery store, I'm not going to hear what they told me the, the amount was. <laughs> and I can't see it on the little on the little gadget that takes, you know, credit cards. I can't see that one either because it's 
it's above my my head <laughs> so <laughs> is there a way you can talk to the manager to see if they can create some lower counters for and they do have some lower counters it's just the way they installed the credit card uh, scanner that is is too high <laughs> so it, it it could be just that that you work with one grocery store and you talk to the manager and say hey I cannot see you know what the cost was and I can't hear very well either so it can be just one thing that you do that will improve things for the community in general if you take the train you know how is that going you know is it is it consistent are they buckling you down is there a spot special spot for you um, to, to park you know is it safe uh, you know, are they respectful? Are they helpful? Uh, all of that needs to be evaluated. So I think that sometimes we're allowing the people who, who are non-disabled to speak for us, and sometimes they, they don't include all the details or important details uh, because they're not disabled. <laughs> so and sometimes when they're building a home and they say, oh, this is for people with mobility issues, but, but it's really not <laughs> because the, the, the bathroom, maybe they did just the bathroom and said, ah, this is for people with disabilities, mobility and disabilities, but they didn't do the kitchen. <laughs> and there are steps to go in and out of the house. <laughs> so it's like non-disabled people try but fail and so I think we need to make one step forward and be talking to these organizations I you know if I could work part-time with a housing a housing agency or a housing uh, construction agency I, I would I'd be happy to and say let's let's establish this department and let's talk about uh, the different things that we can do for a person who is blind, for a person who has dexterity issues, for a person who has uh, mobility issues, and, and the different types of tools that can be placed in this home to make their lives better. You know, so, so it's, it's those kind of things that w we could do, that we could dream of doing, um, and, and convert that to maybe something smaller that we can handle better. So, so I just want to invite all of us in, in the disability community to think about what kind of change can you do, you know, or if, if you want to team up with somebody uh, to change something at the pharmacy, at the grocery store, at, uh, with your city, um, you know, for the sidewalks and the streets to make them safer for us to cross to there are signs you know that they can put up uh, with wheelchairs they have signs for wheelchair users and those can go up in certain neighborhoods you know do you live in a neighborhood and there's none of those signs and to put up one of those signs it's it's really important for the city to do that they do it for the blind they do it for the deaf but they don't do it for people with mobility issues so I think that it's, it's those things that are, you know, healthy to do, and it helps not only you to keep you safer, but also helps the rest of us in one way or another. And you will never know, perhaps, and there might not be any reward, <laughs> but, but you are safer. Things are better for you, and, you know, someone else coming along will also benefit at some point. You know, I worked on a committee in which we were able to establish a, a hearing loop. Uh, and it's a simple system of a copper wire that connects to a little copper wire that's in our hearing aids or cochlear implants. And we got it installed <coughs> in the entire church. We were thinking just the first few pews, but the company said it's gonna cost the same to do the whole entire church. It's not gonna cost any more than it would for these five pews. So we did the whole entire church. And, you know, at one point, a mother tapped my shoulder, and she thought that I had done that because I was the one 
with cochlear implants, but actually it was another member of the group who brought up the idea. And she thanked me because her daughter now could come to Mass and, and hear. So I said, well, thank the, the, the medical, the social medical uh, committee that we have uh, because they, they were the ones together. We put it together. And, um, and so that's, that's how it happened. So now we have another uh, pot of money and um, they're going to redo the church a little bit. They're going to do some, uh, some remodeling. And they're going to remodel in a way that it's going to help people with, you know, mobility issues, the hearing, we already have it. Uh, you know, so it's, it's really going to help us in, in so many ways. And I mentioned, I mentioned uh, a ramp the altar <laughs> and I had no idea you know the pastor said oh, okay okay well who's going to use it so we talked about the usability of, of the ramp and who would use it and um, so actually the pastor went back to the engineers and I said sure we can put that in <laughs> so a ramp will be included folks so it was just that comment that I said to the pastor, you know, I think it's time to add a ramp to the altar. And that would also benefit me because then I can go up and help with readings. I can go up and help with the Eucharist. You know, so many things that I can do on my own. <coughs> so, so this is, it was just that comment. And now at some point, my, my church will have a ramp on the altar. We, I can already get in. It's already there's no steps or anything to get into the church, so <coughs> so that's not an issue. And there are push buttons for doors and things like that, so that's awesome. Um, so it was just one comment, and that made a change. It made a very big change. <coughs> one comment. into the bus system. I've had to email them twice, but they've gone ahead and made those changes. So, so you, you do have the words. You do have the strength. And, you know, I can't write really well, but, you know, there might be some of you who can write really well and can write letters to the city, to Congress, or to whatever it be. We all have a sticky point. And what sticky point do you have that you could put out there and say, I'm going to tackle this. I don't know how, but I'm going to tackle it. So, and the ADA is on your side. You know, in my church, granted, my church is private, and they don't have to take on the ADA, but, but they want to. They want to make it more accessible. So... I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> I don't have a problem with that at all. Because they want to. Because it's the right thing to do. And I say that to all churches. Make yourselves accessible to all your members. Make it accessible. Just because you want to. Just because it's the right thing to do. And for the rest of you who are <coughs> in the public, out in the streets, restaurants, stores, you know, markets of whatever kind, make sure that you are following the ADA and make those adjustments, make those changes, not only because the law is, is right behind you to bite you in the rear, but also because you want to because it's the right thing to do, because you might have customers out there that have disabilities and want to use your establishment. Do it because it's the right thing to do, not because someone can wield the law against <laughs> you and, and crush you. <coughs> you know, Lyft right now is being sued. Uber already went through the courts, and they have to figure out ways of, of making accessible wheelchair-accessible vans and cars. 
So, <laughs> you know, um, and Uber has to do it now because the law came down on them. Lyft ignored it. Now they're in the courts being sued. So, you know, it would be so much better if people would just, <laughs> just do it because it's the right thing to do, <laughs> not because the law is about to bite them, you know? It's just complicated. <laughs> For people who just close their minds on, oh, there's some wheelchair users out there who need transportation. <laughs> None whatsoever. <laughs> so, <laughs> None whatsoever. And actually, there's a lot of us out there who, who need transportation. We need to go to the store. We need to go to the doctors. We need to go visit Aunt May, we need to, you know, <laughs> so many things. So yes, we're out there, we need transportation, we need housing. So my invitation to non-disabled and disabled uh, people out there, put your foot forward, your best one, and try to make a difference, even if it's just one, just one little one. And for contacting Congress or the city or your state, you know, team up with somebody, write a letter, get some signatures, you know, even if it's the project of your life, <laughs> one big project, you know, or a bunch of little ones and, and see how it goes. So that is my reflection for today of the multiple needs that we have out there that need to be clarified up against the law, you know, and those who are not required to follow the law do it anyway because it's the right thing to do. So my invitation to all of you is put your best foot forward and help us make a better and more accessible place for all of us. <laughs>